stage, I'd be worried for you. But if you're a person in the audience, you're in for a good time here. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get this Saturday started right. With Brianna Buckmaster. <laughs> Bag your dog. <laughs> I like how I finally did the thing I've been worried I was gonna do, and I was instantly like, I'm gonna eat so much shit! Yeah, no, it just comes out your paycheck, but it's no big deal. So funny, Liz backstage, she was like, oh, Hi, Brianna, I've noticed that you're wearing flip flops. I just want you to know the chair on stage is a little heavy today. She knew I was gonna do something yeah, to her. Kick the stage. She didn't know you'd do that kind of thing. The bummer is, that was the chair we were going to present to Mike for his birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Mike's birthday chair. Happy birthday! I really broke it. He's happy birthday, keep on so. Basically, they sing the rest of They sing happy birthday. Brianna was there. They sing happy birthday, keep on so. Yeah. Brock and I were translating me. Happy birthday. What's going on? What's up? <laughs> happy birthday. So, how are they? What are they doing? Pity for your thumbs. It's an odd birthday song. <laughs> anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to leave you with the capable angry hands. Capable hands, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jess. Okay, Thank you. Thank you so much. You have to stay. You have to stay. Happy birthday. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Holy shit, there's a lot of you, huh? <laughs> Should I be nervous? Yeah. Oh, wow. Somebody answered yes very quickly. <laughs> Coming to you in five minutes. Find out what kind of mood you're in this morning. Um, how are we? Are we feeling rowdy? Oh, okay. I like that. I couldn't get the vibe this morning. I was trying to decide if people were like in a rowdy mood or a feelsy mood. I'm always in a rowdy mood, but I can get into whatever mood you want me to be in. It sounded sexier than I meant for it to. <laughs> Um, I chose to take my sweater off today because I, sw I sweat so much yesterday during my panel. Yeah, that's the kind of information you're going to get from me today. <laughs> How much does Buckmaster sweat? A lot. And from curious places. <laughs> um, I shouldn't do that. You're all taking photos and I'm like, nah, I can't see you. Um, okay, well, welcome to Saturday, the day before Jordan Jensen get here. Except for Jensen, who will be here tonight, I've heard. Oh, I'll flutter. I'll flutter to see what hat he wears. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. See if his beards are still intact. <laughs> oh, hello. You guys are all randy about it already. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Um, all right. I guess I'll let you ask some questions. <laughs> Finish talking about facial hair. I'll start over here. Or maybe we're not finished talking about it, I don't know. I shaved mine this morning. <laughs> Hi, Bri. Um, Hello. I was wondering um, if you could give me some advice from a comedic standpoint. I started off as a dramatic actress, and now I'm transitioning into comedic. And I've had a lot of people tell me that I won't be successful because of my appearance or my gender. So I was wondering if you have any advice for me with that. Well, that's fucking bullshit, man. <laughs> Uh, Tina Fey was head writer of SNL during the best years of Saturday Night Live. Woo! And I don't think she's doing too poorly nowadays. Uh, Mindy Kaling had the greatest um, acquisition at Sundance Festival in the entire history of that festival. Meaning her film, Late Night, sold for the most money any film has ever sold in the history of that festival. A minority and a single mom. Um, I could go on. I have a list of all of those comedic women are my heroes. Amy Poehler, um, Amy Schumer, Sarah Silverman, Chelsea Handler, um, Samantha Bee. All of these women that are paving the way for you so that you can have women like that to go, you know what? They were probably told the same things I was told and they're still doing well. So the point being is people are out there telling you no because they're scared of you. 
People are out there trying to make you smaller because they're scared of you. So you take their fear and you go, it's okay, I get it, I hear where you're coming from, I think you're wonderful and special, but I'm still going to go out there and be me. And I think that is important for all of us to remember in life. Okay? Anybody who's telling you to be anything other than who you authentically choose to be is because they're scared. And it is up to us, I think, to choose to look at their fear with empathy, not with anger, not with defense. Um, it is fear is, is, a, is an emotion that comes from hurt. Um, so we can choose to look at that and feel, feel bad about it, but do not change yourself for it, okay? Uh, in terms of specifics, I like a good comedy elbow. <laughs> it's my go-to move. It's also apparently a Pocoyo move. Anybody knows that children's show, Pocoyo? Yeah. yeah! I don't know if it's a Canadian thing, I never know. Oh, there you go, Steve Fry. He is awesome, you're right. Um, I can't remember what you asked specifically. <laughs> but the basis of what I'm getting at is going, you, you, and this can translate into anything, into any career, you will always be told that you are not good enough. Always, no matter how good you are. Just don't believe it. Just don't believe it, okay? Even if you feel like you're not good enough, don't believe it. But getting better is always a choice. I, I feel like I'm good enough for you. I feel like I'm good enough for my family, for my parents, for me. And I'm still constantly trying to get better. And it's not because I don't think I'm enough. It's because I just like to keep getting better. And I think that you can want to keep getting better without the added grief of thinking you are not enough. Everybody needs to remind themselves we are all enough. We are enough, okay? Woo! Nice and light way to start it. Hi. Hi. So my best friend and I have Build-A-Bear plushies that are narwhals that make Chewbacca noises. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> you have what plushies? Narwhal plushies. That's the, okay, yeah. Yep. That Make Chewbacca noises. Chewbacca we, noises, okay, yeah. yeah. We, we named them Kim and Brianna. Yeah, clearly, yeah. So, That's I fun. was curious if you and Kim had anything weird best friend wise like we do. Any, if, if we have any best friend what? Weirdnesses like that. Oh, plenty, plenty. Do we have any little thing things? Um, well, I have a ring, which sadly I don't have on, it's my hotel room. Um, that I bought one for Kim and I and gave it to her birth for her birthday last year. That is by a brilliant um, jeweler from Vancouver named Leah Alexander. And it is a little shield with a little diamond in the center of it. Um, and I gave that to her last year uh, after we found out the spin-off didn't get picked up. And so we both wear that every day. Something done right now. <laughs> but uh, we have that as our like, a fun, fun thing that we never really go, we never really talk about it. We both just wear it every day. Um, another thing, this might be kind of personal, but I already started telling you, um, is that so last year uh, was the year of the rooster? Thank you. Um, and wishes, Kim and I both, we're both roosters. Okay, great. And I barely know what that means. But I learned that if you are a rooster and it is the year of the rooster, that is supposed to be bad luck. And so we're like, fuck me. Uh, and so I was learning about all of this stuff in the culture of uh, how to protect yourself against the bad luck in Chinese culture. And so I got some jade jewelry, and I got some for Kim. I got her a keychain or something for her car or something. And then she gave me a ring that was her mom's, that was jade. Yes. Oh, so beautiful. Yeah. So, yeah. We like each other a lot. Yeah. But in a way that's not like, Kim and I are obviously intensely, intensely good friends, but we're so different 
then in some ways I don't know if we would have been friends if we had not met and worked together in this capacity, which is very personal, learning about you guys, learning about each other, and it's not in a social, it's not in an innately social way. Um, we're very, very different socially. She's much more introverted than I am. I'm, I'm much more in need of attention than she is. Um, so I feel grateful that Supernatural and Supernatural conventions have brought her to me because she feels so much more like family. In the good and the bad ways, we get in each other's shit all the time, and we're like, you need to back off. You need to back off. And we're like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, we're like, yeah, we're very much like, like family, so I love her like, like a sister, very much. Thank you. The lecture normals. <laughs> Hello, me. New photo op. Richard and Brianna. Come get your master state on. You heard me. <laughs> Hello, Hi. how are you? Good, how are you? Very good. Good. This is my first convention, so I'm super excited to be here. Oh shit, we're popping yeah. a cherry! <laughs> um, I'm like super, super overly excited to see Jensen, obviously. So obviously. Was, yeah. So I was wondering if you have um, Jensen stories? Yeah, Jensen stories and from Ones that I can say in public? Yes. And like what's it no. like working with my hands? <laughs> okay, sorry, finish your question. Like, what's it like working with him? And do you have any fun stories Sorry, keep going. that stick out from season 14? Did you say sticky? <laughs> Sorry, keep going. She's never going to come to a convention again. Uh, um, I love Jensen a lot. He is, and I told him this, and he is a huge reason that I am a part of these conventions, that I, I think that I'm a part of the show. I'm not giving him all credit, just some. Um, but he and I hit it off right off the bat, and uh, he used to say that he thought that I was like the female version of him, um, which I think is cute. Um, but uh, he's very warm and giving, in the lessons that he's taught me about the business, about the fandom, about what it's like to be someone of his caliber in society, <laughs> you know, uh, and I can't, I won't tell you any, I can't give you really any of the stories socially, because I just can't, <laughs> uh, but he is, he is just everything that you think and hope that he would be. He's incredibly giving, um, and he's become one of my best friends, and I feel so lucky that he's in my life. And give him a sniff when you get a photo. <laughs> and tell him Brianna told you to. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> sniff Jensen Apples. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Uh, so, it's also my first commission. Yay! I'm a wildlife educator, so I was wondering what you and your kids' favorite animal. Favorite what? Animal. Animal. Mine would have to be a honey badger. <laughs> um, my daughter's runs the gamut. Man, oh man, she was so into spiders last year, and now she's like, Mom, I'm gonna need you to cross the street with me because I saw a spider on 12th Avenue. So, uh, uh, she, we have a cat named Goose Goose. Um, and she is obsessed with that cat. To the point of like, Jose and I are now having this conversations of, oh, we can now anticipate how hard this is gonna be as Goose gets older. Um, and so having that interesting, interesting thing about like, oh, how do you talk to your child about death? Uh, but I think that I grew up on a farm, a crop farm. Um, and so animals, even dogs and cats, were farm animals. And so we love them, but not the way I love animals now that I live in the city and that they sleep on my bed and stuff like that. So I don't have the relationship. It's so funny, whenever Kim is here and she gets a question like this, she is, oh man, she just, she loves animals like nothing I've ever seen before. I make fun of her all the time because she'll literally be having a conversation with me and she'll be like, and then this guy is fucking sticking his neck out the window and he's going, hey, fuck, ooh, hi, where did you come from? Huh? Oh, are you a mommy kitty? That's 
so funny. She loves the animals so much. I love my animals, and I love seeing people like Kim love animals. And my daughter likes any animal that is in front of her, unless it's a spider, currently. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck out there. Sniff Jensen. <laughs> Who gets paid the most? Jensen <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. and Jared. <laughs> Say, um, if you couldn't be Donna Hansen. If I couldn't be Donna. Yeah. Who would you want to be? I always loved Chadwick Burke's character, Ash. Yeah. Oh, like that's a funny character, right? Where he's always like, with his mullet? <laughs> I don't know. I just gravitate towards comedic characters. I just do. Um, I couldn't imagine anybody playing the boys but the boys. Um, I would like to say Crowley because I think it's such a complex character. Yes. Yeah, but again, like Mark Shepard destroyed that character. He's an incredible actor. Um, it's so hard when you know all of the actors who play these characters because you love them and you love their talents and you can't imagine anybody else playing them. But who would I steal a role from? If I had to. I just fucking had to. Misha. <laughs> Misha could be Donna. <laughs> right? I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now I'm obsessed with that idea. <laughs> Pitch it to the writers. Hi. Hi, how are you? Great, how are you? Uh, I was here yesterday. I wanted to thank you for what you said about it's okay to not have a child. I'm one in ten, I have endometriosis, and it really spoke to me. So oh, thank well, thank you for saying that. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, thank you. Um, anywho, uh, my question is, being since season 15 is the end, how would you write Donna's ending? I actually would be okay if she died. <laughs> There's always the bullshit of anybody, nobody dies, and whatever. But what a way to go. I never want to die. If this always been the thing, it's like, don't let my character die. Not that the show's ending, I'm like, huh? huh? Go ahead, I don't care. But it's gotta be fuck epic. Yeah. Like, I'm talking Thelma and Louise style. I want a whole episode. I want, I want Donna to die at the beginning of the episode. And then three episodes later, we find out how. I want a fucking arc of Donna's death. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that'll happen, but... Uh, I don't know. It's so funny is um, there's been some rumblings of nobody of importance. So grain of salt, this is not spoilers. This is not factual information. There has been some rumblings, again, of nobody important. <laughs> of a musical episode. I'm with you, I'm with you. If there was a musical episode, I would love to be in it. I am not, there isn't one so far. I am not in it, but I would like to be in it. I want to make this clear. I feel like you all are like, just trying to find any information about season 15. There's no information in this body. Okay? So I would like to have an epic season-long death, it's now a season, <laughs> and or I would like to be in the musical episode, if there is one. Okay? What? Oh, thank you. I mean, I'm not going to die. I'm an actor. I'll still be here. <laughs> Who's going to come get one of these photo ops? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your share, too. Hello. I'm going on the tour this summer. Philly, Charlotte, and Atlanta. You crazy girl! Of course. But I saw you in Atlanta last year, I remember. Yeah. Yay! Did you and Philly have, y'all sound so wonderful together. Do you have any new songs you're working on? Maybe. Maybe. She asked if we had any new songs we're working on. Billy was like very adamant that we have new songs for this tour. I think he wanted to write some stuff, so 
I sent him some lyrics for about six songs that I wrote. He has some music that he wrote. Now, because I'm back and forth from LA to Vancouver and he's got a full-time job and a family, uh, we don't have, I don't think we have enough time to get anything done, original stuff done before the tour. But we will have some stuff we've never done before, for sure. And if we don't, you can slap me across the face. <laughs> Only she can do it, though. <laughs> Only her. Deal? Deal. Mm, now I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> she looks really strong. Can't wait, I'll see you there. Hi. Hi. Um, first of all, yesterday you said no one ever recognized you, and I recognized you at the airport. Yeah, you did. Day. I'm proud of you. I should have said that. I stand corrected. What's your name? Carly. What? Carly. Carly recognized me at the airport, you guys. Yeah. And she was very sweet and very excited, which got me really excited because it makes me feel famous. And everybody likes to feel like that. And then she asked for a photo and I said, no, fuck that. I'm just kidding. I wasn't allowed to because my boss was with me. That's all I'm going to say about that. But I did give you a hug. She asked for a handshake and I said, fuck that, I'm giving you a hug. Is your dad here? Yes. Sorry about all the swearing, Dad. It's just who I am. Carly doesn't swear, though. Do you have a question? Yes, I do. Um, I was just wondering, since, Donna, since both Donna and Rowena are very sassy, but in their own different way, mm -hmm. how would they like interact with each other? I think Donna would think she was fascinating. I think she'd love her, all her glittery gowns. I think Rowena could give a shit. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know the Rowena character that well to know how she interacts with other women. Um, but I don't, I think that she would think that Donna is simple, maybe? and that has, has no power? I don't really know. But I think that Donna would be fascinated by Rowena. I think she would be the same way she would be with Cass, which would be like, what's happening here? Oh, jeez. Look at your eyeshadow, huh? Wow. Okay. Now we're talking. Come right in. You want a blanket? Just offering her the simplest things. But, although Rowena might find that fascinating, or endearing, or she might go, this is somebody that I can partner with, do you know what I mean? So, either end of the spectrum, I think either she'd be like, I don't give a shit, or, come with me. <laughs> That's better. Thanks, Carly. Thanks for pointing that out. Like when people point out shit. <laughs> I do, I do, I like to be corrected. Occasionally. Oh, Everybody starts lining up. <laughs> Hi! So, you tweeted that your daughter drank melted butter from a bowl a few days ago. So, I was thinking, I was wondering if like, you and her had any other like unusual ways of eating food or uh, any unusual foods that you guys eat. Well, my husband is a chef, and so w she just eats what we eat. We don't make kid food for her. Like, she'll, she'll eat chicken fingers stuff when we go to a restaurant, but we don't make it. Home, uh, because we don't want to eat kid food, so she doesn't get to eat it at home. Uh, she gets to eat it with the sitter. Man, does that make her excited when the sitter comes? Um, that's a fun trick for everybody out there. When she was a baby, uh, my husband used to make uh, pate, a chicken liver pate, and she ate the shit out of that, which I thought was hysterical. It's so funny. Uh, Jose and I were talking the other day about how. When I was growing up, grew up on a farm, and so pretty much all I ate was meat and potatoes. Um, and I don't think I ate sushi until I was in college. I don't think I ate avocado until I was in college, and these are things that she ate as soon as she had teeth. So I don't know what is weird. We do try to get her to try everything, even if it's like escargot, or sweetbreads, or... Um, any kind of weird meat that she's never had. Usually she's like, this is different, and therefore I don't like it. Occasionally she'll get used to it, and she'll be like, mm, this is pretty delicious. Occasionally. But we try to make her eat everything. Butter's not a weird one, though. Did that strike anybody as weird? Yeah. 
that she drank butter. Yes. It was like we went to a restaurant. I didn't like go, here's lunch, honey. <laughs> That's what I eat for lunch. Um, we went to a restaurant and she had leftover pasta, which I put in the microwave for too long, so the butter, butter fell off the pasta. And she was like, I'm not going to leave it there, because she's a genius. Um, so she drank it. She gets it. Butter's delicious. And I put it in my coffee. And I'm sorry about this today. I put, it all, I put it in my coffee, and I know you all think that's weird, but you have to try it. It's fucking delicious. Okay? Thank you, Nature. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, I have my question on my phone because I'm scared. No, I love it. I, love, I think that's a great way to do it. Um, if you could meet Donna, how do you think you would react to that and what would the conversation be like? I think I would love Donna. I, I, cause, uh, I mean, me and I love me. Um, <laughs> no, but I think that I love people who are genuine and authentic in who they are. and. Donna is all of those things, and I also love people who are aware of their traumas. We all know those people who 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 wear who wear their traumas as aggressive emotions. Do you know what I mean? And sometimes I find those people challenging to deal with in daily or professional ways. Um, and I think that Donna is aware of what she's been through, what she's going through, what she, what she is sad about, what she's working on. And I love that about people. I love when people go, I did this, I said this really bad thing to you yesterday and it was because of this. It was because I actually meant this or because I actually feel like this. I love people who are very self-aware like that. And I think Donna is very self-aware. So I think that it would be easy for me to connect to her. I also, I, Brianna, um, connect with people, I like to connect with people intimately very quickly. So when I meet somebody and I do connect with them, I want to know everything about them. I want to sit down with them, I want to chat with them about their experiences, their stories. And there are people, who, rightly so, are not, who are a little more guarded, don't want to share that stuff. And that's totally fucking fair. Um, they're just not people that I connect with as, as immediately, so I think that Donna is an oversharer like me, and I think that she also likes to connect with people. So I think that we hit it off. I think we have a fun little date. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you can applaud that. <laughs> you a sexy date to be on. Yeah. Hi, Kristen. Hi. Um, so, I have a six-year-old named Sydney. Yes, and I've I seen videos of her <laughs> singing to my songs, right? Yes. yes. Um, so, she started show um, interest in things that I like, so like writing and music. Um, I was wondering if Valentina was also showing any interest in the things that, you know, that you do, like music or um, like theater. Do you know what she's done, um, which is the funniest thing? anybody's ever asked me to do it, and I went, oh my god, you're so my daughter. So she's not, she's at a stage right now where she's becoming aware of her presence and aware of other people judging her a little bit, so she's starting to get a little shy, which I think is a phase, but I don't think she's innately, she's a very, very social girl. She's never been one of those children that got upset <coughs> when we left her at preschool or anything. She was always like, bye, you can go now. <laughs> I get my people over here. So she's very, very social, so that's definitely more me. My husband's very introverted, so. Um, she has not gotten really into the singing. She's in dance classes, which is adorable. But the funniest thing that she did the other day was I introduced her to the singer Robin. You know Robin? Specifically the song Dancing On My Own. And the other day when I dropped her off at preschool, she asked me to play the song on my phone as she was walking into the building. <laughs> and I was like, yes, I will. And she didn't do anything. She's like, mom, can you put that song on while we walk in? And I was like, she wants a little entrance music. Mad respect, girl. Yeah, so that was the thing that I was like, she gets it. Like she gets like what music does to, to a mood, to a room. I also, always want music playing. Like when I wake up in the morning, one of the first things I do is put music on in the house. Um, 
I just, I fucking love music. Same thing, we were like driving from the venue to our hotel yesterday. I sat in front of the, plugged my phone and I'm like, you're gonna have to deal with this shit. I have good taste in music, so the boys didn't mind, but um, I love music and I think she's gonna be the same way. Say hi to your girl for me. Or is she here? Oh, okay, I'll see her in Jersey. Hi! Hi, um, so my boys have started getting into the show a lot. And how old are they? 15 and about to be 13. 15, 13. 13. Okay, so I introduced them to a friend last month whose name is Doug. And the first words out of their mouth is Doug is a dick. Yes! <laughs> Sorry for any Dougs out there, or any children named Doug. Doug is not always a dick, but in this conversation he is. So my question is, how would you as Brianna have handled the Doug situation differently than Donna? I don't think I would have. I actually don't think I would have been as strong as Donna in the episode breakdown where Doug was like, I'm out, man. That shit's too crazy for me. And Donna was like, I'm sorry, but this is who I am, and this is what I feel is my calling, and this is what I need to do for this planet. Um, I think it's a really amazing thing for all of us. Uh, I don't think you need to necessarily, you know, Kim and I had this conversation in a podcast about our calling, our calling in this world. And uh, I don't think we need to know what our professional calling is. But what a gift to know what your presence, what uh, your full, whole self, authentic self brings to this universe in a way that if you, you knew that if you stood outside of that in any way, that you wouldn't be able to help the world. And I think that Donna knows that. And I think that she had to let Doug go because that was more important to her and to the world, to the universe, and to the energy of the universe. And I think that's something that I, as Brianna, am still working on. And I don't think that if somebody I really loved was like, you need to let that thing go or I'm gone, I don't know that I would be able to do that. So I commend Donna and Davy Perez for writing that scene. <laughs> so thank you. Say hi to your boys, dogs a dick. Supernatural was ever real, uh, who would you band together and fight monsters with? If Supernatural is real, who would I fight monsters with? Matt Cohen, for sure. His wife, Mandy Cohen, because she can throw down. If you guys have seen his film, Mama Bear? No? Okay. You will. You will. But she's, she's crazy little. She'll, she'll take you out. Um, and who is the scariest person I know? Uh, Misha. <laughs> Misha wouldn't have to do anything. He would just confuse people to death. <laughs> I, I try to like keep my distance from Misha only because I feel like he's gonna loop me into something. <laughs> You know what I mean? Or he's gonna say something really smart and I won't know how to respond and then I'll feel like uh, I'm teasing. But I'm not. Misha. Misha and Matt Cohen. Thank you. I feel safe with those two. But also terrifying. Hi. Hi. Um, this is my first convention too. Yeah. Uh, I was just wondering what's your what's the funniest or like the weirdest thing that's ever happened to you on set? Funniest. happened to me on set? Well, um, I have visited set a lot. Uh, so I think one of the funniest things we did was when Kim and I kind of pranked Jensen. Um, I was, she was shooting, this was a few seasons ago, and uh, I came to visit her, and the, the two of us with the director um, asked if we could uh, continue the scene after they would normally yell cut. Um, so it was a scene with Kim and Jensen in the kitchen. And then she, she continued the scene by going, okay, well, you gotta finish up the dishes. He's like, oh, oh, oh. She's like, yeah, I got a date. And then I walk in 
and I put my arm around her. I go, hey, babe, you ready to go? <laughs> and then Jensen, we leave. I give, I give Jensen, for some reason, some fucking serious shade. <laughs> Anybody seen that? The gate wheel. I like look him up and down. Do one of those. I don't know why. It just came to me naturally. Um, and... Then we walk out, and then Jensen, because he's a brilliant comedian, just pans to the camera and went... <laughs> Such a brilliant response. He's like, okay. That's Gans. I mean, isn't that all of our dreams? I shit Don and Jody. Uh, yeah. um, so that was great. Thank you. Have fun this weekend. Sniff Jensen. You're doing great. You're doing great. You're all doing great. But what happens is, I need the microphone to be like that. So oh, there we go. Okay. Well, I wish I could have a conversation with people, but I'm just thinking. Every you can. Time, every time what do you want to talk about? Well, every time you say something, I relate to like your daughter yesterday. Yeah, I teach kindergarten for 34 years. You're nine, but old. That was my first thing in class yet. And my daughter's a teacher, and we want to be private teachers for your kids and Jensen's kids. And she teaches off like their high school, and she's really brilliant. She's back there right now. But anyway, um, <laughs> do you ever do that? Like, can we, like, I don't know, when we have our summer song or something like that, we meet. And plus, I relate to you being, um, like, having a total of three or less friends. I do that. My husband's a ninja bird, I think, because you and I talk so much. So I was like, Right to the main act, the one we love, 